Next on the list, let's quickly post about this. So this post I originally saw on the Fire and the Kid subreddit, but I didn't have any context on it. So I'm going to play the whole entire clip. Um, and basically the context here is if you watched UFC 296 um, and you watched my live stream, I've said a few times, I'm sure other people have said it because I'm not fucking unique in this. But when I was watching the Colby Covington, sorry, the Colby Covington, the Tony Ferguson versus, um, what's his face? Paddy Pimblett fight. The first thing that sort of struck me was like, oh shit, you know, it's probably time for Tony Ferguson to hang it up. He's looking, you know, like a shadow of his former self, unfortunately. And that was a, that was kind of the narrative, I guess, after the fight too, because Brennan spoke about it as well. But Brennan had an interesting point when he said that. It's also, it kind of seemed to really get under his skin that people are saying this as a comment that Tony Ferguson should retire. He doesn't like that narrative. And maybe I guess as a former fighter, he has a reason not to. But for some reason, he then slipped in Brian Callan and about his comedy career. It was a strange little segue, strange little comment. I'm going to play the entire clip so you can hear it, but I don't know why Brian Callan was the first person he thought of. So let's play the clip anyway, and so you can get some context of it. And then I think the Brian Callan stuff comes at the end. I'll play the whole entire thing so you can hear what he said. But it's a very interesting quote, a very interesting clip, sorry. I don't, I just think it's, it's, um, you know, I think there's two guys on this card who are probably done. It's Colby Covington and uh, Tony Ferguson. Ferguson for like, sure. Man. Here's a problem with, now let's talk about Tony and Patty Pimlet. Tony Ferguson, even though he had David Goggins in his corner and, you know, his cardio was there, but, you know, David Goggins can't help in, the, in those regards. But the problem with Tony Ferguson is, if the UFC cuts him, which they probably will, if the UFC cuts him, Tony's such a dog, he signs with Bare Knuckle. Do you want to see Tony and Bare Knuckle? That's the kind of guy he is. Bare Knuckle's right up his alley. So do you want to see Tony go from the U? Would you rather him continue to fight in the UFC, if that's even an option? Or would you rather see him go on over to Bare Knuckle, where it's the most brutal thing, you know? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure me and Cal talk about him firing the kid and he'll defend all. Here, here's the issue. We don't know Tony's personal financial situation. We don't if, We don't know if he's good. All this guy knows is fighting. So it's easy for everybody in here and for Brian and his private jets and his rich dad to go, he should just stop. Everyone <laughs> says this about fighters. Well, he <laughs> in the community. Isn't that like a weird bar to that throw at fucking Brian Callen? With his rich dad and his private jets. Isn't Brian, Brendan also from a family of some level of affluence? His dad is fucking retired. Like, his dad invented some pretty sick computer system thing or something. And made a bunch of money. His dad's very well off. And they were since, you know, they were kids. So why is he acting as if, like, him and Brian are... Don't get me wrong. I'm sure Brian Callan's dad's probably got more M's in his bank account than Brendan's because he's worked, was it for Citibank, I think, in the Middle East and shit, right? Some people would say he might be a CIA operative. Who knows? I didn't say that. Some people say that. But it's not as if they're, like, that far apart. But I guess Brendan now, because he's wearing trucker hats and because he's driving 2004 cars, he now is, what, blue collar? He's now working class. He's now salt of the earth. <laughs> he says this, the fans say this. Did, he should just stop. What should he do? It's all he knows. It's the only way he feeds his family. Well, that's on him. He didn't set things up. He can't. The UFC makes it very tough. Tony Wood didn't come up like a Patty Pinmill or Sugar Sean in that era where there was Twitch and sponsors like that. You limit them to Reebok. So that cuts them at the knees. So he's supposed to allocate resources to plan over, but he has. But you want to be all in to be a world champion. So, so it's this, it's this weird thing. It's so easy for us to go. He needs to stop. Yeah, how's he gonna feed his kids? You gonna pay for it? You gonna pay for it? I can't. I gotta feed my own kids. Who's gonna cover Tony's bills? Who's gonna cover his mortgage, his car payments, his wife? His insurance. Remember, the UFC don't give you insurance. Not for the family. Who's going to cover all that? And we're all quick to go, he needs to stop. You stop doing the job you're doing right now and completely reinvent yourself. And not only do that, but at the same time, make a living doing it right away. That covers the bills. That's why these guys keep fighting. This is why this lawsuit that these guys are going against the UFC is so important. 
These guys should be set. You think if Tony was set, he would have taken seven losses in a row? No. That's why Connor's not foaming at the mouth to get back in there. He's good. All these guys should be, a guy at Tony's level should be good. But he's not because of the pay structure. They screw these guys over. And we all were so quick that that guy should stop. He should retire. Okay. And do what? Be a kickboxing instructor? Making $10 a fucking session? That doesn't pay his bills. Odd way to insult kickboxers out there, kickboxing instructors, as if to say, being a kickboxing instructor, you can't make a considerable amount of money, especially if you're somebody like Tony Ferguson. With his name, with his contacts, with his pool, there's no way you can make more than $10 an hour. It's all it's interesting. It's, it's like he's defending Tony. He's also kind of putting him down. And he's also moral. He's also been doing a bit of moral grandstanding in general. You know, it's kind of a weird thing. In an effort to kind of defend Tony and his right to fight to feed his family, he's also in a weird way sucking himself off. Classic Brendan. He's been making six figures, seven figures for the last ten years. You know, just so quick. Everyone's so quick. Yeah, that guy needs to stop. And do what? It's too easy. We're all quick to judge these guys. They need to stop. They need to stop fighting. Oh, yeah? You're going to pay his mortgage? Nope. So that that's, for Tony, it's tough. You never hear me say, that guy needs to stop. We all do this. We, he guy needs to stop. It's like telling Kellen, you need to stop doing stand-up. I can't, man. I have to pay the bills. I know, but you need to stop. Okay. Are you going to cover what I would make on the road? Oh, you're not? Well, I got to keep doing it. But it's physical health. I know. Can you imagine how you'd feel if you're Callan and you heard that? Why his name was mentioned as if he needs to stop, as if this is a conversation they've been having in the background. Isn't that strange? The Tony Ferguson point that he made is whatever, it's redacted, right? Tony Ferguson's been in the, I think they, did they even start UFC at the same time, period? I'm not too sure. But in my head, I believe that Brendan and Tony's start to the UFC wasn't that far apart in terms of when they first got into it. I don't know. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mistaken. I'm not going to fucking look at the details to find out. But run with me here a bit. It's not as if Tony's been fighting since, you know, it's not as if Tony only started fighting in 1987. He's been around when there's internet and there's social media. He's got a decent social media fucking platform and profile. I'd imagine he's probably got hundreds of thousands of followers, if not maybe a couple of mil. He's not a fucking, you know, nobody out here. He's had some very big epic fights, some of that he's lost, but on huge cards. He's probably made a decent amount of money over the years. If he's invested it well or saved it well, he's probably okay for the most part. You'd imagine he'd probably be okay. And if he did retire and he did kind of decide to hang up his gloves, I'm sure there are plenty of opportunities that he could kind of, you know, get involved in if he did want to do it. Whether it is go to bare knuckle, whether it is doing analysis shit, he's not going to be short of options. So this weird fake faux empathy concern thing he's doing is a little bit lame. But let's move on to the Brian Callan thing. The Brian Callan thing is the interesting thing he's making because I almost feel like he's talking about himself. I almost feel like he's not really talking about Tony Ferguson or Brian Callan. He's actually talking about himself. And he's kind of trying to answer or clap back or respond to the haters and trolls, like people like myself who say, why does he bother doing stand-up when he's not good at it? Why does he bother doing stand-up when he's not selling tickets? Why is he bothered doing stand-up when he's cancelling his European and UK tour two weeks before he leaves? I think this is him answering this and saying, hey, I have to do this to feed my family, which is quite depressing, right? He's basically admitting that, hey, I only, I only do stand-up because it pays the bills. So he's putting, through, he's putting himself through this excruciating experience where for some reason, again, I don't know why personally, but he's not improving. Year on year, he's not getting funnier. His jokes are getting more redacted. Um, as a person, he's not really evolving or changing. His experiences in life aren't really going anywhere. So he has nothing to really inform his fucking stand-up. His worldview is very, very narrow. So that's probably not going to help it either. And he's just going on the road and performing and doing shows just to pay the bills, just to keep his kids in private school, just to make sure his wife has a, a fucking walk-in wardrobe full of Balenciaga and Gucci. That must be a pretty crazy place to be in, especially when you know all your peers don't respect you. Especially when you know the industry has largely turned against you. 
and, and it's all your own doing especially when you know you have a subreddit of like 150,000 plus people whose sole purpose in life is to wake up every single day and clip every redacted thing that you say and do that must be so depressing that must be so horrible which is why i think sometimes a lot of these comedians that say oh the people online that say mad things mean things are just haters i think it's a cope it's a cope because there's no way a regular person can look at these guys like this when you strip away all the material stuff that they have that everybody would like who wouldn't like to live in a house like brendan's who wouldn't like to drive a car like brendan does right who wouldn't like to have their kids go to the best schools they can go to of course you'd like that but when you strip away all the material possessions and you just look at them as human beings there's not much to fucking look up to there's not much to envy there's not much to want there really or be jealous of at all in the slightest so when people poke fun and tease these guys or whoever they are in stand-up it's usually coming from a real place it's like hey you're a redact you got given this amazing opportunity to do what the hell you wanted with life to basically get paid for talking into a microphone and telling fucking dick jokes on stage and look at what you're doing with this opportunity look at what you're doing with this once and last opportunity to just make a living you know via the virtue of being an adult child and look what you're doing you're fucking it up people were allowed to point in and laugh at that and then when you speak about world issues you sound incredibly incredibly detached from reality that's why it's funny and that's why it will continue to be funny because for some reason these guys can't seem to wrap around their heads at regular schmegular people like you and i maybe are just looking at things from an objective point of view with no investment and thinking hmm why is he doing this why is she doing that why are they saying this why are they going there it's like it doesn't make any sense and it's kind of wild how they talk about each other also because imagine being imagine this being your co-worker one of your best friends and they go on one of their shows and they talk about you in this way they use you in an, as an analogy of how you should stop doing stand-up they kind of uh dismiss your opinion because you grew up rich you grew up with a silver spoon they dismiss your right to have an opinion they say you can't have an opinion on one of the most you know highly regarded fighters in the ufc you can't have the opinion that maybe he should retire for the sake of his health you're not allowed to have that opinion because you grew up rich imagine how that make you feel especially if you're callan and you're the guy that in part gave brendan a fucking career and here he is you know mocking you taking the piss and talking down on you <laughs> it's kind of wild it really is kind of wild but i honestly do think this whole point that he made was mostly about him i think mostly about him he's heard people say hey you should quit your crap your specials are horrible worst worst voted special of all time blah 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 he's heard all the stuff but he's basically saying i do stand up to feed my family which in fact might make him a blue collar stand-up comedian <laughs> oddly enough that actually might make him a blue collar stand-up comedian he clocks in and clocks out <laughs> <laughs> there's no wanting to put on a fun show there's no wanting to talk about things and break taboos and push the envelope and change the game nope it's all about blue collar worker clock in clock out i'm here to feed my it's like that meme brendan is that meme i think i'm gonna make this as a thumbnail you know this one <laughs> that's brendan when it comes to stand-up comedy <laughs> it ain't much but it's honest work <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is you know these comedy gigs are not a way to provide entertainment they're not a way for him to like achieve his dreams and get you know maybe follow in the footsteps of his idols or just create cool work or leave a legacy nah it's about clocking in and clocking out and personally i couldn't think of a more horrible horrible profession to do as a job you have to love what you do can you imagine being a like i love djing right but can you imagine being a dj and you only do it to pay the bills you actually don't like being in nightclubs you actually don't like loud music you actually hate ravers and people coming up to you and saying hey i love you as a imagine only doing that just to pay pay the bills imagine how depressing that must be every day having to leave your house get on a plane to go play somewhere exotic and you're hating every minute of it <laughs> that's horrible imagine that so imagine being a stand-up comedian and going to fucking comedy bars going to the fucking i don't know the laugh factory in fucking omaha or some comedy club in a fucking shopping mall or in a casino and you're having to do it just for the money you don't love it you don't care about it 
You don't want to, nothing. It's just for the money. It's just to make sure you can keep paying your car note. Ouch. 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 Anyway, what are you guys saying in the chat here? I've been rambling on my fucking monologue forever. What are you guys saying here? Um, all these all these guys blow their money on drugs and hookers and buying expensive shit. They probably are broke, says Cast Iron Pan. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a big drug problem with those guys. I don't think so, you know. I just think it's probably lifestyle. I don't think it's drugs. I think it's just lifestyle. Getting planes everywhere, buying clothes and shit. I don't think it's drugs. I don't, I don't get the feeling these guys are like hooked on drugs. I think if a comedian was on drugs, they'd be just crazy. You you could tell it straight away. I don't think there's many of these stand-up comedians that are like doing party drugs, for instance. They might obviously do pills and shit, but I just think it's 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 actually way more lamer. Yeah, it's actually lamer that there's not more party comedian guys who are like pushing it, right? Like who's the guy that had his um he blew out his sinus from doing too much coke and shit? There's no there's no more of those kind of rock star guys. If anything, they're just wasting their money on flying out fucking 17 year olds to come and see them perform somewhere and then fucking them in hotel rooms. That's probably where they're wasting all their money. That's the funny thing about it. It's not actually going to anything fun. It's actually going to like, you know, hooking up with underage girls, which is Yeah, Artie, exactly Artie Lang. There's no real like where's the rock star comedians? Where's the fucking who's the guy that smokes all the cigarettes and shit? Where's those guys? He he looks like a fucking comedian. Drinks beer, smokes cigarettes, has got really, really, really interesting and forward thinking and controversial points. You know, pushes melds politics and dice. Come on, man. Come on. Where are these guys? They're all vanilla. They're all fucking boring. Would you really want to go on a night out with any of these guys, really? On a night out, really? You know? Nah, I'm all good. Even Luis J. Gomez. Would you really want to party with him? Not really. You know, they're not fun. They don't really, there's nothing going on there. It's just, what? What are they doing? Boring. Boringo. Boringo. Baranga. Boringo. Um, anyways, let's continue on. Um, let's see this. Oh, what? sorry. I was reading the chat, wasn't I? Um, 150K. Damn, yeah, yeah. I saw a post recently, actually. If you go on there, they've got a little celebration post where they're talking about... Um, crossing that milestone so there's over 150,000 people on that tfat k subreddit it's absolutely crazy man it's fucking insane i fucking love that place um big up brian joseph why can't shub look at the positives ever he makes everything dark and negative yeah because his life is dark and negative brother it is what it is isn't it it's 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 it's, it's, it's whenever i hear him speak about those type of things because he's a crazy narcissist it's always going to be kind of him talking about himself through those stories it's never usually about the story. It's always somewhere in, in part talking about himself because it involves hate. It involves people telling you what to do uh, because he's kind of saying that Tony Ferguson point as also a way to kind of explain why he took the Showtime deal. People always say, I shouldn't take the Showtime deal, but what would you do if you were me? What would you do if you were me? It's like, bro, back then, you're, you're still underestimating how popular and well-liked you were back then. That, that period before Showtime, Brendan was actually not as hated as he is now. He was still in Brett Joe Rogan's good books. If he just would have let that Showtime deal go for one year, just one year, not even two, one year only, he would have been much the better for it, probably. But again, short sighted, takes it. And then when he took the deal, so people also mistake that when he took the deal, it wasn't like he was being like humble about it. He was really letting his nuts hang. He was really net. There were, there were some episodes of The Fighting the Kid where he was kind of like not seriously and seriously mocking Brian for not selling tickets, like laughing at him because he was selling out and he wasn't. It's like, you know, hey, I don't believe in karma, but sometimes be careful how you treat people on your way up because you might see them on your way down, as they say. 